Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about plot structure. So we've talked about approaching someone for role play and also the basics of plotting, but those were more role play one-on-one -on -one out of character skills. In those videos, we didn't go into what plot really is and how to build one. So let's talk about that and how it relates to role play. So role playing, remember, is part improv acting and part writing. So that means some role players are going to come from a writing background when they get into this hobby, but some also don't. So if you're one of those role players that doesn't, this video is for you. Let's break down plot structure. So for our purposes here, we're going to break down plot as the five elements of plot. This is a really simple way to think about plot so that you can conceive of a really satisfying plot when you're role playing. We're gonna do this with the example of a novel, and then we're gonna circle back to role play. So for those of you already familiar with these terms, just bear with me a little bit while we get through these definitions, and then we're gonna go back to talking about role play. First, we have the introduction or exposition. And if we think about this with the example of a novel, let's say Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, this is the beginning part of the story where we find out that Harry lives under the stairs and he lives with his extended family who are really not fond of him. The introduction establishes the characters, the setting, and usually a theme or two of the story. This is also where we put the hook that really brings the readers in. So if we think about Harry Potter as our example, he gets his letter to Hogwarts. So we're going to go through these elements of plot using Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone as our example. If you haven't read the first Harry Potter book at this point, it's really too late for you in regards to spoilers, so I figure that one's pretty safe. So next, after that introduction and exposition phase, we have the rising action. This is usually the first third of the story, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. And this is where the conflict is truly introduced. So in Harry Potter, this is where we're introduced to the fact that Harry's parents have passed away and that their murderer, Voldemort, is also responsible for a whole bunch of other really bad stuff. Also in this section, Harry goes to Hogwarts and we're introduced to our false antagonist in Snape and also our real antagonist for this book, Quirrell. They also have a break-in at Gringotts and Hermione finds a trap door underneath the dog. So this is about the first third of the story. Then in the middle, we have what's called the climax. So for our example, this is where Snape apparently hexes Harry during the Quidditch game. And this represents a turning point in the story because now Harry isn't just concerned with getting used to this new school and this new situation and learning all of this magic. Now he's scared for his life. Next, we have the falling action. This is where the conflict of the story begins to get resolved. So Harry and his friends learn about the Sorcerer's Stone. Then we have Voldemort drink the unicorn blood and he attacks Harry. And this is also when Harry and Professor Quirrell, the real antagonist of the book, face off. And then last, but certainly not least, is the resolution. This is where everything comes together and the reader feels that moment of satisfaction with the story. Voldemort is defeated, he doesn't get access to the Sorcerer's Stone, but we also know now he's not dead anymore and he's back and trying to get revenge on Harry. And since this is of course a series of books, the ending here leaves us wanting to read the next one. Okay, so this structure of introduction, rising action, climax, falling action, and then resolution is something that you're gonna find all over. So if this is the first time that you've heard about it, you're going to start seeing it everywhere. It's in pretty much every TV show, movie, book, any piece of narrative media that we consume tends to have this structure. And often when a story is bad, it's because it either isn't using this structure properly or it's not using any structure at all. Now, all of this being said, I'm not suggesting that you plan each of these stages for your role play, but I am suggesting that when you finish threads or when you finish plots, it's useful to go back and read those plots and try to identify the different pieces of your role play that fall into these different sections. If you can start to identify these things, it's going to make you much better at plotting in the future going forward. And this is, of course, easier to do if you have someone you've been role playing with for a really long time, or you have particular role play plots that you've finished up. Now, of course, in a lot of role play circles, this doesn't really happen. But when it does, this is a golden opportunity to go back to your role play and figure out what things worked really well, what things went wrong, and what you maybe could have done differently to make the plot overall better and more satisfying. Now, when it comes to role play, if you think back to what we talked about in my What is Role 
roleplay video. Roleplay is essentially divided into a certain structure of threads, and then those threads, if they're related, they are an overall plot. And if you're really clever with this sort of stuff with your plotting, you can have these elements not only in your overall plot, but in a lot of individual threads as well. Now, of course, this isn't necessary for all threads. Not every scene needs to have all of these elements. But if a scene is particularly important to your character or to the plot, it's worth thinking about not only what elements does that particular thread have, but where that thread falls in the structure when it comes to your overall plot for your characters. So I'll give a recent thread of mine as an example. This is a fantasy roleplay where magic is involved, and my character Gail is struggling with developing her magic. So she goes out into the forest to practice some magic, and she ends up burning herself. My friend's character, Rab, hears her scream when she burns, him, burns herself, and then he comes running to her rescue. So intro, an exposition, and it has a hook. She's burned and needs help. Now the initial posts for this were quite long because we're setting up everything about the scene. And then when we're done with that intro and exposition phase, the posts get a lot shorter. So for example, in that first post, we might want to take some time to describe the forest, to describe the snowfall, the character's clothing, things of that nature. But after that first post, if those elements haven't changed, there's no reason to bring them up again in a later post in the same thread. So next, rising action. Rab is a blacksmith, so he takes her back to his hut because he's very familiar with treating burns on himself from his blacksmith work. He has a familiar named Kev, and that familiar takes a liking to Gail and is worried about her, and Rab ends up bandaging her wounds and cooking her dinner. So the climax is next, and remember that's the turning point. So Gail agrees to stay and she shows Kev some affection. The pair begin talking about their lives and Gail explains the way that her magic works to Rab. And she does this in such a way that doesn't talk down to him. And that's something that's really new for Rab and he starts to take a liking to Gail as well, just as his familiar already did at the beginning. So if you can't tell by now, obviously this is a ship thread and, and this is sort of their second meeting where we're really establishing the ship. So that's kind of the goal here. So the turning point or the climax is them both realizing that, hey, there might be something here. We should at least be friends. Then we've got the falling action. So we're resolving all of those things that we turned on in the climax. So Gail finishes getting bandaged. They have dinner. They go for a walk at one point. All of that sort of stuff to kind of tie up and get them both on the same page that they do like each other. Then we've got our resolution at the end, so ultimately, Gail agrees to see Rab again. So now, of course, every roleplay thread doesn't need to have all of these elements, and I'm not even saying necessarily plan for them. If you start planning your writing within a specific structure before you've really written any of it down, what you'll find a lot of times is it starts to become unnatural feeling because it's too structured, and then you run the risk of it just feeling formulaic and, and not something that has grown organically through your plotting and through your writing. However, what you will find is as you grow your writing skills and as you grow your plotting skills, a lot of the stuff that you write will just naturally fall into this sort of rhythm and structure. And the reason why is because even if you've never had it explained to you, you know this structure by heart. It is used in almost every piece of media that we consume in the West. So movies, TV, books, all of that. So it's something that you know inherently, even if you haven't had the words to describe it in the past. So the easiest way that I know to make sure that I'm hitting all of these things and that my plots are gonna be really satisfying is really think about three things. So the introduction, so exactly how everything's gonna start, the climax so that I know what I'm working towards and what I want the turning point to be, and then the resolution. And I find that when it comes to role play, if I plan those three elements, then the rising action and falling action are gonna sort of fall into place when you're using your improv skills to put in all of the other pieces of writing. And then the last thing to keep in mind with all of this is, and I've said this a few times, but it's essentially one of my rules of role play. Role play is writing for an audience of one. 
So what that means is at the end of the day, if what you're doing is satisfying you and your partner, it doesn't matter if it meets a certain structure. So I know plots and plotting is something that a lot of role players struggle with. So if this helped you, let me know down below. I'm really curious. And if it didn't, if there's still some things you're struggling with when it comes to plotting, also let me know what those questions are down below um, because I can make other videos on plotting and, and can go into a lot more detail depending on what it is that you guys are still struggling with. So remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all of the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.